All right, everybody, how are we doing? We are uh, back here at Atwater High School, gonna do some GMAW weld, gas metal arc welding. And uh, we're gonna be using some solid wire, some ER70S-6. And we're right now running it on a 75-25 blend shielding gas, which is 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. And you can do these welds also with 100% CO2 if you're practicing. I recommend that, it's a lot more economical, but we use the argon heavy gas for fabrication. Today we're going to be doing a couple welds here, and uh, all of our welds are going to be in the flat position, and we're going to be welding on 8th inch thick mild steel. When you set your welder up, um, if it's like a Miller 250-251 combo, um, just open up the bonnet and go off the recommended settings inside. Um, we also have some XMTs in here with a 20 wire feeder and uh, we just use the Miller Weld app, Miller Weld Calculator is what it's called and you just plug in all of your variables and it'll give you a best starting guess on how to set your machine, wire speed and uh, voltage. So we're going to be running today, uh, we're using these Bernard guns with the center fire uh, contact tip. And uh, the wealth we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, just on a, a piece of uh, metal here, you know, four and a half inches long. We're going to run two beads side by side, just get a little bead control, just to get ourselves warmed up. And then afterwards, we're going to run a butt weld, which I've already pre-assembled. And since this is real thin material, we're not going to gap it. We're going to bump it straight up. Then we're going to try to do some uh, hole fillings. So in case you ever have any mistakes, you got to learn how to fill holes. We'll also do a, uh, the metal will be in a flat position, but we'll do a 2F uh, lap weld. And then of course, we're going to finish off with an edge joint. And the edge joint is going to be in a 1G, and this is going to be an edge because we're not opening it up more than 30 degrees. So we're going to be using that today. So let's start with the two side-by-side -side bead control. Okay, so we're going to start with the two side-by-side -side beads for bead control. Uh, we're using 035 wire, so we're going to maintain about a three-eighths of an inch stick out. And uh, I'm going to start real close in the beginning and bring it up. And then at the end, you'll notice that I, I back the stick out way off just to cool it off. That way we don't key hold the end. So here we go. decent bead we're just going to keep the metal hot and we're going to run one right next to it doing the exact same thing here we go Okay, that's gonna go real good for a little bit. We'll just kind of let it kind of cool down. And one of the things I hope you notice is when I'm running it, I'm doing a slight side to side motion. But more importantly, I'm keeping the wire on the leading edge of the puddle. If you get out of the puddle, you're gonna get a lot of popping and spatter everywhere. So try to stay right on that in the puddle and the leading edge. And you'll now see that these uh, impurities are floating up. Okay, and the impurities are floating up and we'll just quench that and take it to the wire buffer and make it look nice and pretty. All right, so here's our two beads that we did. You know, wasn't quite straight here towards the end, but I'm not going to complain. This looks very nice. 
Uh, one of the things to look for on the back is you can kind of see the, the heat marks. And of course on the second bead, we're getting a little bit of melt through, but the first bead, the heat's perfect. So that's what we're looking for when you do your bead control. We're gonna move on now and we're gonna do a butt weld. And this one, I already pre-assembled it for you, um, but you do not want any gaps because this is real thin material. And uh, we're gonna start on the side opposite the tack. So we'll start over here and we're gonna kinda take this, this wire and uh, we're gonna push this puddle and I'm just gonna hit that side to side motion like I did on the last weld all the way across. Now you guys see that little dingleberry on the end of the wire? That tells us that we're in uh, short arc mode. So these are all in short arc. We're gonna clip that wire off, okay? And uh, start with our 3 8 stick out. And we're gonna just run this thing right at the leading edge of the puddle. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna do our butt weld now and you can see we already have the metal set up. One thing I wanna point out is if you look here at the end of the wire, you'll see that ball, kind of that dingleberry. Uh, that just tells us that we did our previous weld on short arc, okay? That's part of the RMD ball transfer. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the welpers and I'll put the cutting edge on the outside and when we cut, we lay it flat. Okay, get a little bit more wire here. We lay it flat against the face. Well, that didn't work out like I wanted it to. That's all right, there we go. And when you make that cut like that, that gives you your 3 8 stick out. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start this weld. I'm gonna do a kind of a slight side to side to hit both pieces evenly all the way. And we're gonna weld starting opposite from the tack and weld to our tack. So here we go. Let the glow go away, and this one we won't clean. We're just going to talk about it. You know, it's a pretty good, pretty good speed in the beginning. A little fast here towards the middle, but the one thing I do want to look is, of course, we're going to have a little bit of uh, blistering on the back, which is perfect. Okay, not too much to where you're blowing a hole, but just enough to where you see those heat marks. Okay, That's our one G butt weld. Okay, so uh, what we're doing here is we're gonna do a, simulate a mistake where you, you have a hole, we're gonna fill it in. Uh, so we did a half inch hole fill in. We're gonna actually use some aluminum on the base. Uh, that way then the metal's gonna stick to the, the steel and we don't want the arc to touch the base metal at all. If this was a plug weld, then yeah, you would. You'd wanna roll your fillet all the way around, but we're not doing a plug weld. We're doing a hole fill in. So I'm gonna elongate my wire and just show you the pattern. So um, I'm gonna start here at about 12 o'clock and I'm gonna roll on this outside. And then as this begins to build heat, it's gonna start sinking in. So I'm gonna do a complete 360. And then on the second pass, I'm gonna cheat right down into it, roll around into the middle. And then on the third pass, I'm gonna try to get right to the center and I'm gonna really shorten the stick out so it sinks in. And we're using aluminum here on the backer. Uh, I'd prefer to use copper. Uh, I don't have any copper sheeting right now. You can also use a ceramic tile, but um, all I have right now is aluminum. So as long as we don't have the arc on the aluminum, it will not melt and stick to the base metal. So let's try this.
Okay, nice and hot. We're gonna let that cool down. Let the glow go away. You get a little bit of an arc jump to the aluminum, but it shouldn't stick. It's stuck there, just kind of break it free. There we go. The aluminum is now separated. You can see that burnt, that's okay. But what's nice about having a, a, a non-ferrous backer is we can look on the back and we'll see it's a complete filling all the way. So if this was a mistake, maybe you drilled a hole in, in the metal at the wrong side, you know, we can just take a grinder here, grind that down on this side and both sides and it'll look like a nice flat, solid piece of steel. So that is your half inch hole filling assignment. All right, so here's our, our 2F flat is the orientation of the metal. And we're just gonna run this fillet and I'm gonna push this puddle with the nozzle and I'm gonna have the wire is gonna stay on the bottom piece. Do not let the wire come up and hit this top piece. So we're gonna put it right on the bottom and I'm gonna watch the puddle as the puddle rolls up to this front lip. I'm gonna maintain that speed so that puddle just comes up and kisses this top lip up here. Okay, so we already got it pre-assembled. We're gonna start on the opposite side of the tack. We're gonna gauge our speed on the puddle spreading out to that top lip. Here we go. This is real thin material some people are going to say why didn't you do a slight step motion to kind of get that bead to ripple up it's not needed this material is real thin okay so if it was you know quarter inch i'd say yeah do a little bit of a step motion but you can see that we just melted it right up to that top edge okay and of course we got good heat marks on the very top edge good penetration there we'll flip it on the back definitely blistering of the mill scale good enough heat for this joint it's going to hold together and we start on the edge it'll melt over on this edge and of course blend in that that tack on the end and that is your 2f in the flat position lap weld okay so this is going to be our 1g edge weld and if you look at it uh it's technically an edge up until you open up this these two pieces up to uh, 30 degrees so it's less than a 30 degree angle you know, we could push them together really close, but then it would fall over on the table. So that's why we got a little bit of a leg to it so it can stand up on its own. And when you go to set these things up, always use a magnet to help hold a piece. You know, that kind of helps out. Magnets are great, as long as you keep them clean. So we're gonna do this edge weld. Um, I'm gonna be controlling my stick out probably more a little bit on the, the colder side. There is a gap in the middle. So when the wire comes out, I want to hit edge and edge, edge and edge. I don't want to stay in the middle. There's no really not much metal in the middle. And if the wire squeezes through, we're going to get what they call a whisker, which is a piece of wire sticking out the back. So I'm going to basically uh, trace, trace my path and we'll get it going. You know, that slight side to side motion, you can see the, the edges kind of curl down and in. Pull of an edge weld. All right. This side I can see, so it's definitely going to be a lot more uniform on the side that your, your sight is on. The other side is going to be more of a blind side, but pretty consistent. It's a good bead, you know. Uh, we can look on the inside. I don't know if the cameraman can get in there, but you can actually see a bead right underneath on the inside. Definite good penetration. Yep. And that is our 1G edge weld.